Hello everyone, welcome to the course on computer aided drug design. We will talk uh, more on a concept of molecular mechanics and force field. In the previous class I introduced these concepts to you. There are two different uh, major computational uh, methods for calculating st structures, the three dimensional structures as well as uh, some uh, properties. Okay. One is called the quantum mechanics approach. So, in the quantum mechanics the nucleus and electrons of the molecules are separately constituted. That means, uh, you look at uh, electrons separately and nucleus separately. There are two approaches here, one is called the ab initio method here, the other one is called the semi empirical method. Okay. The ab initio method is very very rigorous, uh, it requires a lot of uh, calculations, um, there are no stored parameters, it takes a long time, uh, it can be used only for small molecules. Okay tens of atoms. The other one is the semi empirical method, it is faster, so a lot of parameterization has been done. So, it uh, calculates uh, certain um, features using some regression relationship, it is less accurate, it can be used for large molecules also that means hundreds of atoms. Okay. Um, these quantum mechanics can be used if you want to calculate molecular orbital energies, if you want to calculate partial charges, if you want to calculate electrostatic potentials, dipole moments, you want to calculate uh, um, what is the energy required for breaking bonds, energy required for forming bonds um, and so on actually. The other method is called the molecular mechanics method. Okay. Here um, this is a simpler version of uh, quantum mechanics. Here you do not differentiate between the nucleus and the electrons. Okay, so, it is lumped together as atom like particles, okay, it is like balls, um, then these balls are connected by springs, okay. uh, they are all connected by springs. So, you use uh, classical potentials like Hooke's law for calculating energy. Okay. So, we can calculate a structure, dynamics, and uh, total energy, entropy, free energy and diffusion. So, we can go up to thousands of uh, atoms and molecules. So, if you are doing a uh, a docking of uh, various ligands to a protein, then uh, we always use uh, this molecular mechanics method. Okay. So, um, it is widely used for docking calculations, it is widely used for uh, uh, molecular dynamic studies. Um, so, most of uh, computer drug design uh, uses molecular mechanics and little bit of uh, semi empirical method also is used for calculating um, partial charges, electrostatic potentials. Uh, and so on actually. Okay. So, we will go more into um, the molecular mechanics initially. So, the energy uh, is made up of four different components, the stretching energy, okay, stretching energy, then the bending energy, the torsion energy, the non-bonded interaction. Okay. So, the stretching, if you look at uh, a particular molecule, assume it has got four atoms connected or four balls connected in three bond formation. Okay. So, uh, this is called the bond stretching. Okay. Two atoms are st stretched or uh, conversely may be pushed in or compressed, that is called the bond stretching. Then we have the angle bending, suppose you have three atoms okay, okay, and then the two bonds can bend inwards or outwards. The third is the torsion energy, okay. this is like a twist in the third dimension, that is the torsion energy. The fourth one is called the non-bonded interaction. That means, uh, look at these two atoms, they are not connected, but there could be some interaction between these two because of electrostatic uh, forces, van der Waal forces or even hydrogen bond formation um, if uh, the atoms are favorable. So, they are called non-bonded interaction. So, you have energy terms for each one of them, you add up and then you get the total energy of this particular molecule. Now, let us look at each one of them independently. Uh, stretching energy E is equal to uh, summation of K B R minus R naught whole square. So, R is the distance here between these two atoms, R naught could be the equilibrium, R minus R naught is the uh, distance you have stretched or how much it has been elongated or even compressed. So, Hooke's law as you know it is delta x squares so that is why you have a square term coming in. So, k b is a constant, you are doing summation because there could be many bonds, so there could be many stretching happening. 
So, that all adds up to this energy. So, um, we have parameters k b we have or not so, uh, we need to know them. So, depending upon the type of atom this one and this one the or not will change k b will change ok. It could be carbon 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 nitrogen carbon oxygen and so on and between carbon carbon also there could be a single bond sp 3 double bond sp 2 or uh, triple bond uh, sp or aromatic and so on actually. So, you need to have that data for the k b as well as for or not for various systems which is stored ok. They are called parameters. So, we need lot of parameters. So, depending upon the type of softwares um, the number of parameters may vary and you may have large number of uh, parameters in some softwares uh, and some softwares may have less number. So, between softwares you will always get a difference in the energy calculation ok. So, if you look at uh, the graph because uh, it is um, r minus r naught square it will appear like a parabola. So, you stretch uh, the energy will increase you pull them together or push them together energy will increase. So, this is the optimum ok optimum distance ok. So, if you push them inwards energy will increase if you uh, push pull them out energy will increase of course, you cannot pull beyond uh, um, certain uh, distance as you know uh, the bond can break bond is stretched towards the point of dissociation ok. So, this is the optimum and ideally you would like to have that sort of optimum value ok. Now, let us go to bond stretch again uh, uh, generally we use a quadratic term as I showed you, um, but it the energy can be very large for very elongated bonds. For example, um, as you can see here uh, the energy goes up like a parabola. So, the energy numbers go up even if there is a small change in the r minus r naught. So, quadratic has that problem ok especially for elongated bonds. There is something called Morse potential which is more accurate the term for that is like this E stretching is equal to summation of d E 1 minus exponent minus beta r minus r naught whole square ok ok. So, now this has got 3 different uh, parameters or constants, but um, this is more accurate than this uh, especially for elongated bonds because the energy values will look very high um, because this is a quadratic term. So, uh, many softwares try to use this rather than use this. A cubic is not used because it gives you a wrong asymptotic form, um, but sometimes quartic is also used that is r minus r naught power 4 ok. So, you may have r minus r naught square r minus r naught cube r minus r naught power 4. So, you have many 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 constants coming here. So, if you look here a quadratic you will have only 2 constants if you go to a quartic you are going to have 1, 2, 3, 4 constants ok. It also fits very well uh, Morse potential if you go that is also quite accurate here you have 3 constants ok. So, uh, you have to note that r naught is not the same as the equilibrium bond length because of non bonded contribution because uh, there could be attractions because of electrostatic when you consider a, a molecule with many 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 atoms. So, R naught will not be the same as the R naught when we have just a C C type of bond or C O type of bond, but once you add many other atoms um, the R naught changes um, because of first, um, the other interactions that is happening ok. So, um, if you look at it ok this is uh, the quadratic ok this is uh, the 4 quartic and this is the Morse and this is the actual exact. So, as you can see um, many a times Morse fits much better than a um, quadratic or a quartic. Let us go to bending energy now. Bending energy you have 3 atoms and there are 2 bonds. So, um, the the angle could be less or it could be extended or expanding or compressing. Again you go for a uh, quadratic form like this E is equal to summation of k theta theta minus theta naught square. So, you have 2 parameters theta naught and k theta and again you do a summation because there could be many bonds where there could be a bending happening ok. Now, uh, again uh, you are going to have a parabolic type of relation. So, if you expand the bond again it may be going up energy if you make it uh, acute 
again the energy may be going out. So, obtuse acute both times energy will be going up in a parabolic form. This is the optimum. Um, you could also change the k. Um, so, you may have uh, a shallow looking quadratic um, term like this or like this. Okay. So, you can have different types of quadratic. Larger the value of k, the more energy is required to do form an angle from its equilibrium okay. because uh, um, the energy becomes very high. Whereas, uh, this type of shallow looking things, you do not need very high energy to um, deform from its uh, theta naught. Uh, angle bent term again you can have a quad, uh, this is the quadratic form okay uh, you can have even go for a, um, quartic form cyclopropane like as you know cyclopropane is like this right uh, it is a cyclic uh, you have uh, here CH2 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 it is a very strained system. So, you may have to go for this special atom types may be used for very strained atoms this is a very strained system remember that okay. And then we go to torsion, torsion uh, the expression for the energy looks slightly different. So, you have a torsion is the a twist as we can say it is a twist in the third dimension. So, we have uh, uh, terms like a 1 plus cos n tau minus phi. So, we have constants these are the parameters we will call it ok. These are the parameters which um, sorry these are the parameters which uh, need to be stored in your database. Um, so, torsion energy for example, if you take a, a, a butane like system okay, this is a cis butane like. So, the energy is going to be very high if this is a trans butane energy is going to be lower as we might have studied okay. In between various uh, configurations of these four you may have different energies okay. So, as the tau increases you see this cyclic, but um, the energy numbers uh, is very high for a cis energy in a value is very low for a trans configurate. So, you can have different tire forms of the equation. So, we can have a single cosine with the appropriate barrier multiplicity that is v i and n or we can even go for these type of relation cos theta minus theta naught cos 2 theta minus theta naught cos 3 theta minus theta naught. So, if you have a dipole type you can put one fold, two fold, conjugation, three fold, steady contributions and so on actually ok. So, we can go down to a, a, a three terms here or we can stick to one also this is called the torsion energy. Uh, now, we can also have cross term imagine that just because um, you are uh, a stretching a particular bond the other bonds and other angles remains constant that is not true there is always going to be some interaction. If I bend uh, a, a, a system of course, uh, the bond length may change. So, that is why we have call it cross terms. For example, um, you can even I stretch um, two atoms this stretch may be get disturbed. For example, if I stretch maybe this bend will get disturbed. So, there could be an interaction between stretch and bend ok. If I bend one angle I am sure another angle may get disturbed. So, there could be an interaction between bend and bend and so on. So, you could have similarly when I stretch maybe the torsion gets disturbed when I bend also torsion get disturbed. So, uh, there is always a interaction and the energy uh, the terms are not just uh, independent of each other. So, some softwares consider cross terms interaction terms between stretch bend and torsion for example, stretch stretch r i minus r i naught r j minus r j naught stretch bend. So, you see that uh, the terms come in here multiplying each other bend bend. You can have bend bend torsion you can even have a three term coming into the picture ok. So, some softwares consider the cross term uh, depending upon the complexity you want to put in realistic uh, factors you want to put in you can have more terms and of course, uh, more the terms I need to have uh, more parameters known. For example, this is a new parameter k i j which uh, talks about the interaction between two different stretches i and j. So, I need to know that parameter value. In addition uh, computational time also will go up because you have extra terms into your uh, energy calculations ok. Um, so, the out of plane bending imagine you have a atom sorry a molecule with four atoms ok uh, three are on the plane and one is up. So, that is called out of plane bending term angle to plane or distance to plane can be used for the out of plane bending. So, angle or distance 
that is called improper torsions for out of plane blend in chirality constraints are required in united atom force field okay so we can bring in those aspects also out of plane bending energy re, uh, related to that so that could be based on either distance or that could be based on the angle then we have non bodden interactions and um, the important ones van der, Wa van der Waals and electrostatic okay what is electrostatic imagine there is a charge on this atom qi there is a charge on this atom qj uh, qi qj by distance rij that's the electrostatic term okay and um, van der waal term looks like this aij rij raised to the power 6 plus bij rij raised to the power 12 okay this is called the van der waals term so here the denominator is rij whereas here you have um, two denominators rij 6 uh, rij raised to the power 12 okay so this is the van der waals um, okay, so this contributes uh, negatively, this contributes uh, positively towards the energy term A and B are constant okay? and there are variations to this, there are variations to this. We will look at uh, some of them. Okay? So we have the repulsion, we have the attraction, here the electrostatic interaction, these are non-bonded and there are many non-bonded interactions like hydrogen bond, dipole, dipole um, and so on, we will look at some of them later. Okay, so, how will the van der Waal look like? So, if they are far away, there is going to be attraction, if they come very, very close, there is going to be repulsion. Okay, that is why you have these two terms. Okay, uh, far away, uh, two atoms, there is going to be attraction, and uh, when they are closer, there is going to be e repulsion. So, the A is called the degree of stickiness, of, and um, B is called the degree of hardness. Okay, B is called the degree of hardness. A is called the degree of stickiness. Okay. Um, you can modify by changing this uh, term, we can have qi qj divided by d rij. Okay. D is the dielectric constant, so the d changes depending upon r. Okay. So, uh, we bring in this extra term in the denominator for the electrostatics. Normally, we, if we ignore that, it will be qi qj divided by rij, but we bring in distance dependent dielectric constant here. So, that means when they come closer you may have different dielectric constant when they are far away you can have different dielectric constant. Um, okay, so, uh, what happens? There are partial charges are created due to the asymmetric distribution of electrons in the chemical bonds. right? So, if you have uh, there are electronegative um, atoms and electropositive atoms, so there is always going to be some partial charges created. Okay, O means you may have negative slightly, they are all delta, delta negative and so on. So, that is called the Mulliken charge. Okay. Uh, polar covalent bond like HCl, the shared electron oscillates between the bonded atoms, whereas chemical bonds between atoms within a molecule consists of one or more electron pairs distributed among the connected atoms. And bonding electrons are not equally distributed among the atoms that have different electronegativity, like I said, O minus you may have. N okay, may be carbon uh, may be different positive. So, a small charge which leads to all these electrostatic forces. Okay. Now, let us look at uh, um, benzene for example. Okay. Uh, if you look at benzene, um, so we have carbon, 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 carbon. So, the H being positive you have a small delta positive charge. So, the carbon has to take in a small negative charge because the whole molecule per se is um, neutral. So, these carbons will have slightly negative negative charge. Of course, in some cases uh, carbons can have positive also, we look at it. Uh, look at this, okay. benzoic acid, we have a C double bond O, O H, um, as you know H, so it is got a positive charge, okay. this O you can see has got a um, negative charge and this O also got a negative charge, this O has a higher negative charge than this O, you see this carbon has a positive charge here, whereas in the benzene you see carbons had negative charge. Okay. But then uh, this carbon has a positive charge, but all the carbons in the aromatic have negative charge, you can see and they are not same, they are all very different because of this benzoic acid, okay. they are symmetric here, but um, this um, uh, COOH is closer, so these carbon have very low negative charge. Okay. Uh, whereas these carbons have higher negative charge. So, it is different 
because of uh, this particular COH group here. Okay? Uh, look at this NH2. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. So, we have a benzene connected with the NH2 here. So, nitrogen minus 0 0.156 and again uh, all these uh, carbons on the benzene ring and again as you can see um, it is not same unlike here um, because of the NH2 group okay, uh, these carbons have different uh, charges. So, these two carbons have same negative charge this carbon has uh, um, lesser negative charge and this carbon has higher negative charge okay between this and this if you see benzoic acid and aniline uh, the carbon here are quite different as far as the charges are concerned okay you can see a lot of difference that is why the reactivity changes uh, that is why the electrostatic um, um, values change and and so on actually okay there are um, softwares for example this particular software uh, it can calculate the charge distribution if I put in a molecule. Okay. Uh, we will look at it at some point, but uh, this particular in, uh, software called Chemaxon, it can give you the charge distribution here. Okay. Um, hydrogen bond, that is a very, very important uh, uh, term because um, many ligand protein interactions are based on hydrogen bond. They have a different form of equation. Okay. If you look at Van der Waal, we had r power 6 and r power 12. Okay. Here you see r power 12 and r power 10, okay. a r i g 12. Um, what is this hydrogen bond? So, this oxygen here becomes a hydrogen bond acceptor, okay. this hydrogen here it is a hydrogen bond donor here. Okay. So, we can have all the three uh, may be involved. Okay. These two may be hydrogen bond uh, donors this may be hydrogen bond acceptors and you can have a very network of hydrogen bond uh, uh, formation in water molecule. Okay. So, they have a different terms as you can see uh, with respect to Van der Waal. So, non-bonded non interactions can be made up of Van der Waal, electrostatic and hydrogen bonding. Van der Waal, electrostatic and hydrogen bonding. Uh, the repulsive part of Van der Waal potential due to overlap of electron distribution is called Pauli's exclusion principle. It rises very steeply because of steric repulsion. Okay. Attractive part of Van der Waal's potential due to London or dispersion forces, it is dipole induced dipole interaction, it is proportional to r power 6. Okay. It is proportional to r power 6 as, you, as I showed you here proportional to r power 6. Okay, that is called the London or dispersion forces. Okay, so, uh, uh, different types of forms for non bonded interaction this is called the Leonard Jones potential. Uh, we have a summation of 4 uh, epsilon sigma r i uh, j raised to the power 12 minus sigma r i j raised to the power 6. Um, so, r minus 12 rises too rapidly, it is easy to compute. We have another one called Buckingham potential. Um, a exponent minus b r i j minus c r i j minus 6, um, but it is slightly harder to compute you have to calculate this or uh, we can tabulate sigma and epsilon for each atom obtain mixed terms as arithmetic and geometric means like this okay, sigma is equal to sigma plus sigma uh, a a b b by 2. So, a sigma a b could be uh, geometric means or it can be even uh, arithmetic means for sigma and the geometric means for epsilon. Uh, okay. So, different approaches by which uh, we can calculate uh, these, these terms for um, A, B or I, J. So, uh, when you have a drug and it is going and binding to a receptor that is your protein, um, there are a lot of uh, bonded interactions, non-bonded interactions. For example, your co covalent bond is bonded, there is a strong bond you can look at the energies 40 to 110 kilocals per mole. Whereas, ionic or electrostatic interaction these are all non bonded it is only 5 to 10 minus 5 to minus 10 kilocals per mole, ion dipole or dipole dipole minus 1 to minus 7, hydrogen bond minus 3 to minus 5 kilocals per mole. So, you see that um, uh, they are all quite small when compared to the bonded all these non bonded interaction or um, energies are very, very small when compared to this 
but uh, in uh, ligand protein binding only these play a very important role because there is no um, bond formed um, there are only non-bonding interactions electrostatic van der Waals pi pi uh, and um, charge salt bridge and so on actually. Uh, if you look at uh, the um, effect of distance as you know electrostatic we have q i q i q j divided by r i j. So, uh, the it is proportional to 1 by r okay. whereas if you look at charge dipole type of interaction it is related to 1 by r square okay. dipole dipole it is related to 1 by r right power 3 dipole quadrupole 1 divided by r power 4 charge induced dipole 1 divided by r power 4 dipole induced dipole 1 divided by r power 6. So, we call this um, as the long term uh, interaction because uh, all these other terms will rapidly decrease as the distance increases whereas this decreases only linearly whereas this may be decreasing um, all these decrease non-linearly non quadratically raised to the power 4 raised to the power 6 decrease. So, they decrease very rapidly whereas, uh, this decrease is only linearly. So, we call these as the uh, long term interaction. So, in the long distance when the ligand and protein are there initially we start having only electrostatic forces, but as they come closer and closer all other forces start taking place and they become important in uh, judging how the um, ligand um, binds into the active side, what type of conformation it takes and so on actually. Okay. So, we will uh, continue more. Uh, there are many parameters we saw right, so many different parameters, so many different parameters, constants, k values um, in the multiplication, uh, r naught, theta naught, so many parameters. Okay. So, uh, all these uh, force field or molecular mechanics uh, softwares need to have a database of parameters. So, where do they get them from? They get from li literature experimental data, sometimes they do very uh, exact calculations that is called ab initio calculations. Um, so, much of the data is from small molecules. So, uh, I collect data from small molecules, but when I go to a larger molecule uh, I assume those parameters do not change you understand. So, if I have a small molecule um, which has got a CO bond I get the parameters for that. But when I go to a large molecule and um, it, it has a CO bond, I assume that parameters do not change. That is that is uh, a very important assumption I make. Okay. So, parameters for fragments of proteins are appropriate for that fragment in different contexts also, okay. in different contexts also that is a very important point we need to. So, um, whether it is in a small molecule or in, in a large molecule we assume um, the same parameters that is a very important. Uh, parameter um, approximation. So, much of the data is from small molecules. Okay. We cannot get all these parameters from a big peptide, but uh, using small molecules like 200, 250, 300 molecular weight. Uh, we get from crystal structure because crystal structures when you crystallize a, a organic molecule, um, we can get the length, angle, non bordered coefficients. So, we can run some molecular mechanics calculations and then fit um, the findings to the experimental data and get the parameters. We can get from vibrational spectroscopy, okay, some of the vibrational spectra Raman or IR. We can also do ab initio quantum mechanics calculation. Uh, calorimetric studies, um, we can find out heat of uh, uh, the formation, we can get delta G okay, using uh, some calorimeter. We can get from so, from thermodynamic measurements we can get some. So, all these experimental data can be used to get many of the parameters and one important assumption is small molecule parameters obtained from small molecule um, can be extrapolated even if it is in the large uh, if it is a fragment in a large molecule also. Uh, sometimes uh, they are also got from ab initio quantum mechanic calculation as I said ab initio is a very accurate uh, study and um, you perform such very accurate experimental studies using uh, very high end quantum mechanic ab initio calculation. Okay. So, uh, this is how the parameters are got actually. There are many empirical force field, okay. um, large number of force field uh, softwares are there, okay. 
we will look at some of them and their form, but all of them will have basically uh, the terms connected to bond uh, stretching, bond angle, uh, torsion, non-bonded interaction and sometimes uh, uh, cross terms. Okay? And uh, some softwares will have lot of parameters, some softwares will have less parameters, uh, some softwares are used predominantly for uh, organic molecules, some can be used for inorganic and so on actually. And some may even have metals, so um, parameters for metals, iron for example, zinc, copper and so on actually. Okay? So, we will uh, uh, look at all these uh, more in detail, how the parameters vary between softwares how the equations look like between softwares and uh, so on actually. Okay? Thank you very much for your time.